Uh, some of you guys landed here off of our intro video. Uh, in the intro video, we talked about uh, uh, several of the projects that we had that were coming up. Uh, we And uh, one of those projects that we talked about uh, that came up was Beer Keg Nuclear Fusion. Now, uh, basically, what we're doing is nuclear fusion inside of a beer keg. Why would you do nuclear fusion inside of a beer keg? Well, there's several reasons for this. Um, for one, most nuclear fusion experiments have to occur inside of a vacuum chamber. So that means that you need a chamber that you can take, you can hook a pump up onto. It's actually a couple of pumps. You'd have like a turbo pump, and then you have, have the thing goes down to another pump called a mechanical roughing pump. And these things basically suck all the, the air outside of this chamber. And for this particular experiment, we needed a really, really, really low vacuum. We needed to get to 10 to the minus 6 torr. Uh, that's the minimum specification that, that we had for this vacuum chamber. So a lot of you probably don't know what that means. So to put it in perspective, uh, atmospheric pressure right now is running at around 760 torr. So, you know, that's, there's a big difference between 760 torr and 10 to the minus 6 torr. Well, to uh, really also get a better idea of how low of a vacuum this is, the edge of outer space, if you go 100,000 kilometers straight up, the vacuum of space at that point in time is 10 to the minus 3 torr. That means that this is, we needed a vacuum that's at least three orders of magnitude lower than the edge of outer space. And what we call this is high vacuum, which is usually abbreviated HV. So we wanted to use a beer keg because when you get into high vacuum systems, it gets really tricky to get good vacuum. And so they do this process on the inside of uh, vacuum chambers uh, called electropolishing. And electropolishing kind of just basically smooths out all the features, all those really little tiny cracks and crevices that you can't see with the naked eye. But if you go underneath there with a really powerful microscope, you'd be able to see all these hills and valleys. And the thing about those is they can trap molecular oxygen and nitrogen and that kind of stuff. And so when you pump it down, what will happen is water molecules and all that, they will do what's called outgassing into the chamber. And so because of that, you can never get the chamber down below a certain vacuum. You know, hitting 10 to the minus 3 can even be tricky if you have a bad outgassing problem. And we needed three orders of magnitude better. So we looked at different setups. We looked at what a used one would cost. It was a fortune. We looked at building our own and then getting it electro polished. Cheaper, still costs a fortune. And then uh, we started thinking, it's like, well, what about a beer keg? And uh, so a buddy of mine, uh, Steve Lynch, works uh, over at Four Peaks. I believe he's one of the owners now, too. Uh, but, uh, well, whatever. Anyways, he gave us a couple of beer cakes that we could play around with. And the reason why I want a beer keg is it's made of stainless steel, like most vacuum chambers are. Stainless steel has very little outgassing on it if it's prepared properly. And beer kegs also have the advantage on the inside because they worry about bacteria and such sticking to the walls because they need to reuse them for filling up the beer keg to put more beer in it and all that. They need it to be sanitary. So they electro polish the inside of the kegs. And so uh, we didn't know to what extent they electro polish and we didn't know if it would hold up well enough or not. So we basically just, uh, uh, we ran some tests to see if it would work. And in the end, when it was done, we found not only was our, the outgassing really quite minimal, uh, our 10 to the minus six spec, that, that's nothing. We, we got that thing down to 10 to the minus eight. 10 to the minus eight, it was high 10 to the minus eight, but it's still technically 10 to the minus eight, so we'll take it. So we are super pleased that we're able to go from 760 tour down to 10 to the minus eight. And the reason why you want your vacuum so low is the vacuum represents how many basically you know molecules and atoms are still floating around inside this chamber. And if you have too much of this stuff inside the chamber and you're trying to do a nuclear fusion reaction in the center of this thing, what will end up happening is uh, the, uh, the atoms that you're using to fuse will bump into these other molecules causing side reactions. And so we're trying to measure these, but now we're getting these extra measurements off of the nitrogen, the oxygen, and the argon, and carbon, and all that stuff that, that's still inside that chamber. So by pumping it down this far, we don't get these side reactions, so we get a much cleaner result. And we saved a ton of money. We built that beam line for less than 500 bucks. That's pumps, that's hookups, everything. And uh, we're pretty proud of that. It's not super pretty yet, because it was the first time that we ever TIG welded stainless steel. But we got it to seal, and uh, we're pretty proud of that fact. So 
there's obviously a lot more to it than this. We're not just doing nuclear fusion for nuclear fusion's sake, and this is really important to say too. We're doing this because we're doing, this is a new compositional analysis technique. And we will get into that in further detail down the road. Uh, can't wait to talk to you guys about it, but really that's something I want to show you at the cake chamber. So that's definitely coming. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let us know. Leave a comment down in the comment section. We'll respond to it. We want to hear from you. If you have good ideas, we want to know about them. Help us out. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe.